Welcome to Madrid, capital of Spain. The city lies around 600 kilometers to the west of Barcelona, but is, of course, at the very heart of this story. This is where the head of state, the king, as well as the constitutional court, the government and the parliament are all based. If there were to be any referendums on any of Spain's regions seeking independence, then it's at the parliament that that would have to be debated and decided first. Well, let's head then to the parliament and find out a bit more. Well, you join us in the lower house of the Spanish Parliament, uh, looking at some rather impressive paintings of kings and queens of Spain throughout the years. We're here to meet a member of the Partido Popular of Mariano Rajoy, Pablo Casado. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Really nice to meet you. A spokesperson for the party, in fact. Well, you're the perfect person to answer our questions then. Uh, the question of independence for Catalonia or any other region, in fact, keeps coming back to Article 2 of the Constitution. It guarantees the indivisibility of Spain. Now, we know that more than 90% of Catalans validated the Constitution in 78, but times have changed, opinions have changed. Isn't it just time to loosen up the Constitution? Well, I think constitutions uh, usually remain, uh, for example, the American constitutions. It has been there for three centuries, mm -hmm. and it has several amendments. That's why we're supporting. We can improve our legal system, but without just uh, throwing them in the bin. And what we are saying is that the nuclear part of our constitution, like the French one, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, that Spain is a country based on the national sovereignty, so that all the citizens are equal in law and also in obligations. Mm -hmm. And uh, even our constitution is allowed to divide a part of the country. But it has to be decided not only in the Spanish parliament, mm -hmm. but also through a referendum mm -hmm. in a national terms. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of being, you have to be under the law, because the law is the only thing that makes us equals. If we look at the wider situation today, with where separatist sentiment has come to, how much there is in Spain, it does seem to have grown perhaps out of uh, a succession of weak or fragile governments that needed to make pacts with the regions and ex in exchange giving them money and also power over things like education. There is a sense for many people that that has helped to contribute to a rise in separatist sentiment and uh, the, the central governments have in fact created this situation in a sense. Well, but that's not bad. I mean, I think that Spain is one of the most decentralized countries in the world, even more than the federal ones, even more than Germany mm -hmm. and, and Switzerland in several terms, even more than the American uh, United States. Uh, and that's okay, because that's the pact of the transition. We said we want to be an autonomic country, and we want that the social competences, health, education, social care, has to be with, uh, within the uh, autonomic competence of the governments in the regions. I think it's not a matter of just money or just competence, because, for example, the Spanish government has had to pay in the last years more than 70,000 million euros for those competence mm -hmm. that the Catalonian government had. I think it's something related with identity, even supremacy, or even xenophobia that many nationalist movements are having. We Europeans know that those behaviours uh, are not good at all. When you talk about nationalist movements, though, and make comparisons with other nationalist movements in Europe, I imagine that many Catalans would say, this isn't a fair comparison. We do have a distinct culture and identity. We have been living together pretty well all these times. And they have a self-government and a self-management uh, of the income of their citizens that actually were going well. So what we want to say right now is that every, everyone has to, to be under the law and we can start to talk about how to improve together. Not because the, the, the Partido Popular wants it, because the 90% of the Catalonian people want it. All right, well, thank you very much for talking to us. Pablo Casado from the Partido Popular. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Awesome. 
Now, that economic thread really does run strongly through this story. Many companies have moved their headquarters outside of Catalonia already, and there are question marks about whether this economic powerhouse region could go it alone. Our correspondents Melina Uet and Sarah Morris have been investigating. Catalonia, a GDP higher than Portugal's, an unemployment rate four percentage points below the national average, Exports, tourism, separatists have pointed to a booming economy to sell their case. Elisenda Paluzzi is an economics lecturer at the University of Barcelona. She claims without the current wealth redistribution, Catalonia could save 14 billion euros a year. The fiscal balance is the difference between taxes generated in Catalonia and the spending that is re-injected in the region. The figures favour Catalonia by up to 10, even 14 billion euros. A difference of 4 billion euros that depends on the calculation method. The lower figure is published by the central government. Catalonia is a relatively rich region and it's normal that it should keep help other regions. But in reality, the Spanish system is a lot more complex. In fact, a lot of these funds directly benefit small but relatively rich regions like Cantabria or La Rioja. But not everyone in Catalonia feels shortchanged by the rest of Spain. At the Barcelona University Pompu Fabra, another economics lecturer argues Spain's regions are economically dependent on one another. And the independence bid has already damaged the region's prosperity. We're undergoing a moment of serious uncertainty. The figures prove it. Spending is down by 20 to 30 percent. Unemployment rose in October. The figures were very bad. And above all, investment has plunged. As investors fretted about being left outside the Eurozone, the Spanish government passed a fast law to help them. The move was a lifeline for businesses like cement maker Mollins. Listed on the Barcelona Stock Exchange, the firm joined a stampede out of Catalonia. Here we are in the new boardroom of Mollins cement makers. Companies like ours have been forced to weigh up the risks linked to this uncertainty to take into account the damage that could be done to our businesses. The business's cement production remains in its home region. For the moment, changing the legal base to Madrid is mainly symbolic. Basically, it's about ensuring stability for all our suppliers, shareholders, clients and employees, of course. Since the referendum, more than 2,800 Catalan companies have relocated to another Spanish region. just the seat of political power but also royal power. We are at the Royal Palace, the official residence of the royal family, even if they prefer to actually live further on the outskirts of Madrid. It's a historic location. Where better to come and speak to a member of Spain's oldest political party, the Socialists? Alejandro Cercas, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, madame. Oh, you're a former member of the European Parliament, in fact. Yes. Well, um, I'd like to get the perspective from you of the Spanish Socialists on the Catalonia question. In this uh, critical moment, this uh, critical uh, political uh, situation for us, the key point is the democracy, is the respect of the rule of the law, respect our constitution, because it's the basis of our peace, our future, and then for us uh, is, uh, we need absolutely restore, restore, eh, the respect of the, our constitution. What about this question of identity? Is it possible to be uh, Catalan or Galician or Basque or, or whatever and Spanish and European? 
for me is, is clear, but I think also uh, happily the most important number of the Catalan also want to be, to continue to be Catalan, but at the same time Spanish and European. Mm -hmm. the, this kind of uh, mind of the nationalist, uh, the 19th century, is uh, in this time of the globalization, is one thing I don't understand. And even more, if a minority won absolutely by force eh, to broken the, 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 the right of the other people in, Cat in Catalonia. Because there are millions of the Catalans who want to be, eh, continue to be Spanish eh, and European. Now, I know that uh, some members of the Spanish Socialist Party mm -hmm. have put forward the idea that the Basque countries model of autonomy could be a sort of a solution for Catalonia, more autonomy than it currently has, but not full independence. Can you explain why that could be a solution for you? The nationalist Basque are able to, to have the agreement and to make compromise. Uh, on contrary, the nationalist Catalan won't absolutely have 100 per 100 of his demand and they want, and happily you see, to be independent. Mm. And that is not possible to, to find a, 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 a point of, uh, in common. Mm -hmm. But on contrary, the nationalist Basque, they are able to discuss with us and to find an, an agreement and will, will be very, very, very uh, good uh, lesson for the Catalonia uh, uh, see what's happening in, in Basque country. What's, uh, uh, they are able to find a good solution for them and also for the Spanish people. Just one final question then. Do you believe that uh, the experience with Catalonia could inspire other regions to try and make a bid for independence as well? Uh, that is a big problem if the, the same way of the Catalonia became the, the way for the other region in Spain, Spain explodes. But not only in Spain, eh? perhaps in other, in other countries of Europe, will be the same question. We are in a time when we are working to destroy all kinds of borders. No new border, no new division. We are in front of us a new world, a world of the globalization. Then it's a crazy idea to be, to be in the past, in the 19th century, for the nationalism, for the old nationalism. For this 40% of the nationalists, they, they must think about what's happened in the new world uh, when ideas of the 19th century because it's very bad for them and very bad for the other people also, or for the other region, of course, of course. Well, thank you very much for giving us your point of view, Alejandro Rosacas from The Spanish Socialists. Very interesting. Nice to meet you. And uh, we have, in fact, been looking into the question of whether Catalan independence could inspire independence in other regions of Europe. Alex Le Bourdon from France 24's Europe team has been investigating. For the staff of the Lombardy government representation in Brussels, a strategic day begins. Falco is discussing the latest details of a project that would see a new office for this large railway company in northern Italy being set up here. And this is the core of their work here at this little piece of Lombardy in the heart of the Belgian capital, promoting their region to the European institutions. In a referendum held at the end of October, the people of Lombardy voted largely in favour of greater autonomy for their region, just three weeks after the Catalans. But the comparison stops there. We do not talk about independence like in Catalonia. We talk about the independence of managing funds that should be spent by the region. About one-third of the EU budget is devoted to the regions. We, the regions, think of a united Europe, one Europe with regional autonomies. And the states, at this historic moment, think that Europe is 27 states. So where is Europe? We think that Europe is the Europe of regions. In Belgium, the NVA has always campaigned for the independence of Flanders. At the beginning of October, this MEP brought a Catalan flag to the hemicycle oh, here it is, yeah. to show his support. And in the end, we see two relevant levels, political levels which are important for us. That is of the Flemish democracy, the region, and of course the European one. And the in-between level of the Belgian context will become less and less important. In Brussels, it is this institution that is the voice of Europe's 274 regions. For its president, 
The Catalan example is not the one to follow. The vast majority of European regions do not dream of waking up one morning as independent states. But many regions want to improve their status and evolve. But situation without an immediate and apparent solution, like Catalonia, casts a shadow over all these evolutions. A unique case in Brussels, this building houses representations from four different European regions. Today, the president of the French Nouvelle-Aquitaine region welcomes her German, Polish and Italian counterparts for meetings. Around the table are very different powers depending on their regions, from Germany's federal system of powerful Landa to the French regions. In France, we are in a situation that remains very centralized. So the plight of a French region like ours would be better if we had more financial autonomy to carry out these policies. A will far removed from the independence movements that are testing the European Union today. is now falling on Madrid's Plaza Mayor and this is where we'll say goodbye to you. Thanks very much for joining us on this exploration of Spain and separatism. We hope to see you very soon here on France 24 for more shows from all around Europe.